Welcome to Starting Scripture, a reading of the Bible with Katura. Today is day 190. We are reading from the first book of Kings, uh, chapter 15, and Song of Solomon 2. First book of Kings 15, Abijam rules in Judah. Abijam began to rule over Judah in the 18th year of Jeroboam's reign in Israel. He reigned in Jerusalem three years. His mother was Makkah, the daughter of Absalom. He committed the same sins as his father before him, and he was not faithful to the Lord his God, as his ancestor David had been. But for David's sake, the Lord his God allowed his descendants to continue ruling, shining like a lamp, and he gave Abijam a son to rule after him in Jerusalem. For David had done what was pleasing in the Lord's sight, and, obey, and had, had obeyed the Lord's commandments throughout his life, except in the affair concerning Uriah the Hittite. There was war between Abijam and Jeroboam throughout Abijam's reign. The rest of the events of Abijam's reign and everything he did are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. There was constant war between Abijam and Jeroboam. When Abijam died, he was buried in the city of David. Then his son Asa became the next king. Asa rules in Judah. Asa began to rule over Judah in the 20th year of Jeroboam's reign in Israel. He reigned in Jerusalem 41 years. His grandmother was Makkah, the daughter of Absalom. Asa did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight, as his ancestor David had done. He banished the male and female shrine prostitutes from the land and got rid of all the idols his ancestors had made. He even deposed his mother, his grandmother Makkah from her position as queen mother because she had made an obscene Asherah pole. He cut down her obscene pole and burned it in the Kidron Valley. Although the pagan shrines were not removed, Asa's heart remained completely faithful to the Lord throughout his life. He brought into the temple of the Lord the silver and gold and the various items that he and his father had dedicated. There was constant war between King Asa of Judah and King Basha of Israel. King Basha of Israel invaded Judah and fortified Ramah in order to prevent anyone from entering or leaving King Asa's territory in Judah. Asa responded by removing all the silver and gold that was left in the treasuries of the temple of the Lord and the royal palace. He sent it with some of his officials to Ben-Hadad, son of Tibramam, son of Hezion, the king of Aram, who was ruling in Damascus, along with his message. Let there be a treaty between you and me like the one between your father and my father. See, I am sending you a gift of silver and gold. Break your treaty with King Basha of Israel, so that he will leave me alone. Ben-Hadad agreed to King Asa's request and sent the commander of his army to attack the towns of Israel. They conquered the town of Ejan, Dan, Abelbeth Machah, and al Kinnereth, and all the land of Naphtali. As soon as Basha of Israel heard what was happening, he abandoned his project of, fortif of fortifying Ramah and withdrew to Tirzah. Then King Asa sent an order throughout Judah, requiring that everyone, without exception, help to carry away the building stones and timbers that Basha had been using to fortify Ramah. Asa used these materials to fortify the town of Geba in Benjamin and the town of Mizpah. The rest of the events in Asa's reign, the extent of his power, everything he did, and the names of the cities he built are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. In his old age, his feet became diseased. When Asa died, he was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. Then Jehoshaphat, Asa's son, became the next king. Nadab rules in Israel. Nadab, son of Jeroboam, began to rule over Israel in the second year of King Asa's reign in Judah. He reigned in Israel two years, but he did what was evil in the Lord's sight and followed the example of his father, continuing the sins that Jeroboam had led Israel to commit. Then Basha, son of Ahijah, from the tribe of Issachar, plotted against Nadab and assassinated him while he and the Israelite army were laying siege to the Philistine town of Gibbethon. Basha killed Nadab in the third year of King Asa's reign in Judah, and he became the next king of Israel. He immediately slaughtered all the descendants of King Jeroboam so that not one of the royal family was left just as the Lord had promised concerning Jeroboam, concerning Jeroboam by the prophet Ahijah from Shiloh. 
This was done because Jeroboam had provoked the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, by the sins he had committed and the sins he had led Israel to commit. The rest of the events of Nadab's reign and everything he did are recorded in the book, book of history of the kings of Israel. Basha rules in Israel. There was constant war between King Asa of Judah and King Basha of Israel. Basha, son of Ahijah, began to rule over all Israel in the third year of King Asa's reign in Judah. Basha reigned in Tirzah twenty-four years, but what he did was evil in the Lord's sight, and followed the example of Jeroboam, continuing the sins that Jeroboam had led Israel to commit. Song of Solomon 2 The Young Woman I am the spring crocus blooming on the Sharon plain, the lily of the valley, young man. Like a lily among thistles is my darling young, among young women, young woman. Like the finest apple tree in the, in the orchard is my lover among other young men. I sit in his delightful shade and taste his delicious fruit. He escorts me to the banquet hall. It's obvious how much he loves me. Strengthen me with raisin cakes. Refresh in me with apples, for I am weak with love. His left arm is under my head, and his right arm embraces me. Promise me, O women of Jerusalem, by the gazelles and wild deer, not to awaken love until the time is right. Ah, I hear my lover coming. He is leaping over the mountains, bounding over the hills. My lover is like a swift gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he is, beyond the wall, looking through the window, peering into the room. My lover said to me, Rise up, my darling. Come away with me, my fair one. Look, the winter is past and the rains are over and gone. The flowers are springing up. The season of singing birds has come, and the cooing of turtle doves fills the air. The fig trees are forming young fruit, and the fragrant grapevines are blossoming. Rise up, my darling. Come away with me, my fair one. Young man. My dove is hiding between, behind the rocks, behind an outcrop on the cliff. Let me see your face. Let me hear your voice for your voice is pleasant and your face is lovely. Young women of Jerusalem, catch all the foxes, those little foxes, before they ruin the vineyard of love, for the grapevines are blossoming. Young woman, my lover is mine and I am his. He brow browses among the lilies before the dawn breezes blow and the night shadows flee. Return to me, my love, like a gazelle, or a young stag on the rugged mountains. And now, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Dear Lord, direct our paths this day through your Holy Spirit, your daughter, your servant, is listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.